Picture this. I look up and the sky is wings, not clouds, not birds. A flying reptile with the wingspan of a small airplane, 10 meters across, circling like a shadow that forgot the ground. That's Quetzalcoatlus, and its scale alone is the first punch. Standing as tall as a giraffe on the ground, it could look you in the eye, then look over you at the next snack. But size is only the hook. The menace comes after. This wasn't some clumsy sky whale. It was a launch catapult on stilts. With a four-limb vault, it could explode from the earth like a spring trap, hit the air and own it, riding thermals like an ancient glider pilot. Once up there, it didn't flap like crazy. It soared, silent, efficient, patient. Down on the ground, that's where it gets creepy. Imagine a stork's slow, deliberate walk. Now supersize it and give it a spear for a face. Quetzalcoatlus's skull was longer than your arm. Its toothless beak, sharp enough to pinch, pierce, pry. It wasn't chewing, it was skewering. Small dinosaurs, hatchlings, carry on. Anything it could grab and gulp went down the hatch hole. And that neck, long, muscular, shock absorbing, worked like a loaded spring. Step, step, freeze, strike. In a blink, you're a silhouette swallowed by a shadow. People think giant equals slow, not here. On the ground, those pillar-like limbs were built to stride. In the air, it glided faster than you could sprint, scanning with razor eyesight. You wouldn't hear a flap. You'd feel a pressure, a hush, and then it's already there. It didn't need teeth to be terrifying. That beak was a multi-tool. Pry open a carcass. Clamp a squirming prey. Probe a shoreline. Snap with bone snare force. And the head crest? Think aerodynamic tail fin and billboard, stability in crosswinds and a visual flag that said, this sky is taken. Now picture dusk on a late Cretaceous floodplain, heat still rising, thermals twisting. Quetzalcoatlus rides the last lift, peels off and drops, silent, like a deployed parachute. Legs touch first, shock absorbed, wings fold into a walking fortress, it prowls. A baby dino hesitates near the water's edge, one step too far. The beak flashes. The world goes tail first, head last, into a living pterosaur-shaped trapdoor. Could it carry you off? Probably not. Would you want to test that hypothesis? Absolutely not. Because what made Quetzalcoatlus horrifying wasn't just its size. It was its efficiency. A master of energy budgets, a commander of wind and ground, a patient ambusher with airplane wings and assassin's time.